Yeah, folks. Good morning, greetings, really. Um, so Liz, we have a full group today. Um, the only ones who didn't make it across the line and I, I, uh, they might drop in is uh, tag observability, but everybody else has got something to say this morning, so. Okay, good. I guess we'll give people a couple of minutes to join. I hope everyone enjoyed a long weekend if they had such a thing. <laughs> Get 18 folks in the line. I think about giving them a minute or so. Um, yeah. Yeah. Just you know. still gradually joining in. Exactly. We'll give it till three minutes past. <laughs> I'm going to guess we have quite a low attendance number today because of that long weekend. Yeah. Like Monday and Tuesday rolled into one. <laughs> it's everyone's favorite i just got back this afternoon i've been away for the weekend as well so lovely uh, i can i could easily believe there are plenty of people still traveling from wherever they're traveling from um we've got dave on the line dave i wasn't sure if you wanted to be able to add to the agenda today or if you wanted to be able to save it oh um, i guess if we have time i'm happy to cover my topic today okay. especially if will's here i don't know if will's here yet, or yet will be. but i will i will keep watch for you um, okay if will doesn't show up to... that's probably oh sorry oh sorry uh, dave continue i've got somebody else like the uh, uh aaron is signed into something funny that is all oh i see no i was gonna say if will doesn't show up it's probably not worth covering my topic but if he does we probably should that is completely fair okay Erin does in fact know that she has signed in as Bozeman Commodity Karate. She will return. Excellent. Liz, passing to you. <laughs> All right, let's get started. Uh, so uh, usual rules apply, antitrust, you've made it to the meeting. And today I think our main agenda is updates from the tags. So without further ado, shall we start? Alphabetical order, I see. Excellent. <laughs> That's like in school with my first name. I was always first having the A's. <laughs> well, it always gets me in the first row. Um, yeah, hello everyone. The update for tech app delivery. Uh, first on projects, there's currently two projects under review. One is uh, cross-plane for incubation and the other one that was submitted was Dapper by uh, Microsoft. Crossplane, we have uh, conducted the end user interviews already. The due diligence so far is Already, I also talked to uh, Harry about this. We still feel that we might want to do a bit more of, uh, end user interviews to see a bit more on the adoption side there, but overall the rest of the due diligence from the tech side is fine. Depper, um, they just submitted two days ago. So honestly, I didn't yet have time to look into the uh, due diligence document. They also haven't uh, presented yet or any interviews are uh, running yet. Um, so. On presentations we had, we had two projects presenting. One was Conveyor, uh, which is actually a collection of tools for migration to cloud native um, environments. And I just realized I didn't put the link in here. I'll, I'll update this later on. It was an interesting project. Uh, at the very beginning, when we started with SIG app delivery, we always had this uh, migration topic, which we put to decide and say, well, it is kind of an interesting topic, but we don't want to make it front and center. I think it's still an interesting collection of tools that they have with Conveyor. And, uh, but they didn't necessarily want to apply. It was just a presentation. So we still encourage projects also to present to the wider community and share it, even if they're not uh, wanting to apply, just as other techs uh, do as well. Lagoon um, also, uh, presented, I assume that they want to go for Sandbox going forward. It's a delivery platform. It comes more from the web and uh, hosting background, uh, mostly focusing on web-based uh, environments, still waiting for them what they want to do next. Again, we encourage more projects in the delivery space to also actively 
uh, present and, and have this discussion. On good news, deliverables. I remember this when we talked a long time ago about what are operators and that we should be working on an operator white paper. So thanks to the people driving the operator uh, working group, the white paper is now ready for uh, public review with contribution from a lot of people. There's also a PR available for comments on this one. This was really a long time in the making. Uh, we started this activity, then we kind of got stalled where people got sidetracked and then thanks to um, people who took um, took it on again, uh, we now really moved forward with this one. Uh, so Pill, obviously feel free to provide more review on the white paper. Um, then the folks from Litmus together with uh, the container, a container chaos project started on a white paper. They didn't create a working group for it, they just started on it. On, on, on chaos engineering uh, best practices, which I think is also super interesting. And again, we told them to reach out to, to other people as well. This is very early stage uh, work there as well. Operator white paper, I think is at, uh, I mean, we have Thomas and the other folks here. Uh, feel free to have a look at it and we should share it with a wider audience for, for review. On, on the working groups, um, the plan is that we, um, retire or dissolve the operator working group once the white paper is done. The goal was always to come up with the more concise definitions of what operators are used for and so forth. Once the white paper is done, that was more or less the mission of the working group. So once this is done, uh, we will dissolve the working group, which should be a couple of weeks out. Obviously the initial authors are still contributing to, to SIG after they were here. Air gapped, um, this was an activity we started also a long time ago had some traction in the beginning, but not really anymore. So people are not actively driving this forward. So I also would retire this working group um, because there's simply no activity uh, right now. Application enablement uh, working group. There is a draft charter for a proposed new working group in app delivery. Um, we are still struggling a bit with the name or <laughs> and um, so the idea is more or less defining requirements for environments where you deploy your cloud native applications. It's still early, in an early draft stage. I'll keep you updated as this commences. I think once you read it, the um, the overall idea what they want to achieve is well clear. It is still struggling a bit with uh, with the name, but there's also really some good use cases in there. It really relates to applications requirement on the underlying infrastructure, cross checking, ensuring that things are there, and making them more easily deploy. So this was mostly driven by people who actually run into these very specific problems. Um, also the team around uh, application enablement is reaching out to all related projects um, that kind of touch this uh, space as well. And last but not least, I sent it on the mailing list today. <laughs> uh, I sent it before, but it kind of got sidetracked obviously to the CC mailing list. Uh, the current co-chairs together with the TUC leaders, and we had a vote because two of the, when well, one of the co-chairs, Brian, is uh, stepping down, and obviously Harry is transitioning into the TUC to have a vote on new co-chairs and uh, also on tech leads. Uh, so this is shared on the TUC mailing list as well. And that's it from SIG App Delivery. Feel free to ask any questions. I have a question. I just uh, opened the link to the Chaos Engineering white paper, which looks like it's a collaboration between some folks from App Delivery and some folks from, I've already forgotten what the other group was, <laughs> um, uh, networking. Okay, cool. Yeah. And I wondered if there's like a working group or a way for people, if they're specifically interested in that Chaos Engineering white paper, how they can find out how it's going on and, and how to get involved in that work. Yeah, I, I can talk to them. So I was pushing them actually to work with the chaos, uh, the networking chaos people to bring them together because they're working on the same topic. Also, it's two different um, texts that are working on this. I think we could establish a working group and let me connect with Lee on this one because I think you're driving tech network so we can connect and so it's, it's a good idea. I think it's still in an early draft stage. Um, I'll give you an update next week, but uh, next meet next time we have this meeting. But I think it's a good idea to form this in into a working group it, once it has matured a bit more. Good point. Yeah, great. Make sure that people can get involved if they if they want to do so. Awesome. 
Anybody else with any questions for Aris? I dropped a quick note into chat. Folks didn't already um, pick this up. The next sandbox review meeting is June 22nd. For the projects that we're coming by and presenting and considering, um, get your applications in. All right. So uh, next up, who's who's up next? It is contributor strategy. Howdy. <clears throat> Hello, Josh. Um, so first and big news is uh, if you hadn't noticed, the new contributor site is live. Um, so you go to contribute.cncf.io um, and uh, that has the new design um, by Carolyn, um, I, as well as it now has a branching structure where there's a link <coughs> off to maintainer information, as well as information about how to contribute to projects. The um, and um, uh, so please explore that. We've got right now. There's a little bit of material there. Um, we're going to have more as stuff gets approved. Um, I uh, for the the maintainer site with lots of information about how to run the CNCF project. Um, related to that. Um, We've nominated uh, Carolyn Van Slyke as the first tech lead for uh, contributor strategy. Um, I don't know what's required to get that finally merged. Um, it's got enough votes. The, um, uh, but uh, since she's going to continue to maintain the website, um, it seemed only appropriate. Um, uh, for anybody who's uh, been involved with contributor strategy, also wanted to note uh, per the slide there that we're changing our meeting schedule um, from what it has been. Um, I, and, and a bunch of the meetings are changed. So if you actually wanted to come to those, uh, take a note of the new schedule, which is already up on the CNCF community calendar. Um, for sub projects, um, for governance, um, the uh, charter document advice is in approval. This is basically for projects to have um, a mission uh, scope um, uh, uh, information about their project. Most CNCF projects do have this, but not all of them. Um, uh, hence, deciding that it was worth having advice there. Um, so uh, that's just waiting for a second approval um, and then that'll get merged and then we will add um, examples to the templates. Um, for contributor growth, um, the contributor ladder template uh, got merged. Um, feel free to take a look at it. Like I said, this template was meant to be an, an all-inclusive sort of restaurant menu template that people can cut the pieces out of that apply to their project. Um, I know from here what the recruiting playbook is still in development, um, which is something that a lot of people have asked us for in terms of recruiting contributors. Um, also, um, Catherine um, has been working on, I, I, she has been using this new generation tools called community CRMs. Um, and so is writing that up as a tool for project maintainers um, as, as to actually have a software tool to help organize their project. Um, maintainer circle, we're looking at, there was supposed to be a maintainer circle this Thursday. Um, we're looking at rescheduling that one due to low RSVPs. Um, the topic was going to be uh, uh, maintaining during grief and loss and conflict resolution, um, obviously uh, the first being particularly applicable um, this year. Um, and that's our activity for the month. Questions? Amy, is there any um, reason or what's the process for merging Carolyn as the tech lead? Is that? 
Uh, I need to check on where we're actually at as far as like the vote um, as of. Yeah, uh, we can take this one offline. I will do a like a vote, like gather because we've got a lot out there right now for tech lead votes, so. Okay, well, we'll leave it in your capable hands, but uh, I, I think just from a very casual quick look, I think there's lots of plus ones there. So yes, there are lots of plus ones. I'm not sure if it's totally across the line yet, and I don't want to be able to get everybody's hopes up without me checking on it for real. So sure. um, watch this space for more. Great. Anyone for anything else on contributor strategy? All right, let's move on. Look like it is Tag Network up next. Right here. Um, well, just uh, let's talk about projects first and then working groups. So just as a brief recap of projects that were recently accepted. So Submariner, uh, KGB, and Emissary Ingress. Uh, so a couple of sandboxes and an incubation. Um, there are a few projects under review currently. So Linkerd is under review for graduation. Um, Cilium is under review for incubation. Um, Meshery is under review for sandbox. Service Mesh Performance under review for sandbox. And um, Yarp is under review for sandbox. So, so there's actually a, lo a lot under review. Um, in context of working groups, so there's, there's one active working group in well, there's one active working group that we're able to keep um, tabs on, and in part because this working group often presents at um, TAG Network. Um, it's the Service Mesh Working Group. Um, we've spoken of some of its initiatives before. Um, uh, since last we met, there was an update given, well, on um, this project called Get Nighthawk. It's a relatively um, small project. It's intended to help expose um, Envoys, the Envoy project's load generator and just sort of create distributions of it, get it into people's hands. Consider that um, it's be growing in popularity and um, has a number of um, unexplored, is, is interesting, has some, some things that are useful. It's a useful tool to some of the research that's going on in the Service Mesh Working Group. Um, so there was a, there have been recent posts about Service Mesh performance being one of those areas of focus um, and that continuing to be an ongoing area of interest. And so Nighthawk uh, plays a role in that. So um, there's been, there's a set of, there's one, maybe a set of discussions to have um, around metrics. So speaking of performance, and that has to do with a little bit related to the review of um, service mesh performance as a sandbox, potential sandbox project and um, how SMI traffic metrics and um, a proposal from Tom K, whose last name I don't wanna butcher on the record, but um, um, Tom K of um, CADA, who's, you know, has suggested um, a time or two to have a discussion around, um, well, metrics coming from Kubernetes ingress, from Kubernetes gateway, um, from API gateways, and just Kubernetes service metrics themselves. So kind of a, a timely discussion or topic brought up by him as it interrelates to a set of discussions um, for um, SMI, SMP and Meshery and discussing around metrics and how they're, how they're tracked. So, so uh, noting the, the next review date of the 22nd. Um, I'm hopeful that there have been a couple of uh, maintainers of, e of two of the projects that are under review that have been out either on parental leave or COVID has hit close to home for some. And so that's, that's stalled some of the, re the project reviews. But hopefully we'll, hopefully they'll, they'll have, we'll, some of those projects will have concluded. Um, just as we look forward to next meeting topic for TAG Network, um, I'm going to try to write in pen um, Yarp, whom we just missed um, this last meeting time, uh, based on a presentation, based on the fact that the agenda was was full. But but Sam Spencer was in uh, representing Yarp and was in um, attendance last time. So yeah, that's the that's what we got. I think. 
I think I want to just add a little bit of colour around the those sandbox review projects, um, just for the benefit of people who haven't um, necessarily uh, heard what we've uh, what well, what we've really been thinking here is that you know there's meshery, there's service mesh performance, there's the service mesh interface, and they all have some kind of commonality around the definition of what a service mesh is and how it performs. So. Uh, at the last sandbox review, we at the TAC had a kind of question of should these all be three separate projects or is there some overlap? And um, if you have views on whether that's a good idea, bad idea, you know, which parts of that make sense or don't make sense, um, do feel free to reach out to me or anybody else on the TOC or Lee or anyone who um, is kind of involved in those projects because. Um, yeah, if, if it makes sense to kind of, the, the idea here is really that as the CNCF, it would be nice if we had a pretty aligned view on what service mesh means and does and how you measure it. So, uh, so that's where that, that thinking is coming from. All right, any other questions for Lee and Tag Network? Okie doke. Let's move on to Ricardo is actually out today, but Tag ah. Runtime is here. So they've got a lot going on with project presentation in the communities, um, working on some ML ops pieces, and it looks like they are doing some, some like kind of pretty heavy agenda items here. Um, so other pieces in here are basically like they have a community space, they have their own YouTube channel, and they're looking forward to collaborate with the other tags. So I promised him I would be his reader today. Awesome. Yeah, lots of stuff going on in here. So are they the first tag to have a community space for All a tag? The tags or? have their community spaces. We're just okay. slowly rolling them out. Um, and they get a space to be able to do either um, meetups or um, just like other kind of spaces in here. And uh, it's kind of an experiment right now, but we'll see what happens with them. Yeah, OK. So if I click on that link, I can see one group member who is Ricardo. <laughs> so it's the idea that anyone who is a mm -hmm. named co-chair tech lead some other named role they they would appear on this site yep um like i said we're still rolling it out and people are still kind of finding their feet around this one but it's kind of a good experiment for what if you had this space like a meetup very nice all right so i'll move on security Unless anyone has comments about runtime well yeah let's go on to tag security Do we have anyone hey. representing tag security? Yep. Oh, JJ, hi. <laughs> hey, Liz, how are you doing? Um, yeah, so we have a few updates. Um, main main one is uh, Sarah and I are rolling out uh, as co-chairs, and then we have uh, uh, better better ones and better version. Uh, Brandon and Aradhana stepping in, uh, and they've been doing amazing work, as you can see here. And uh, they've been pretty involved in like cross community work as well, uh, not just within CNCF, outside of CNCF as well. <clears throat> so um, the entire community is like uh, so excited about their uh, stepping up to be a co chair, and so are we. And uh, it's in much better hands uh, as we roll out. And that I think is our term comes to an end uh, June 3rd. So this is right on time. So for the people, for those of you that haven't voted on the TOC, please follow up and then get the voting going. It's still pending a uh, pending much of TOC votes on this. So that's that's about uh, that's about the coaching nomination. Uh, memberships have gone up uh, significantly over time. Uh, it's ninety four members right now from sixty seven different affiliations. <clears throat> Uh, all ranging from uh, NIST to federal to uh, different organization, organizational membership. So you can go take a look at it. And then it's pretty impressive, interesting group of people that's doing amazing work there. So that's that's about coach and nomination. You also have, I think, one more slide, which if Emily is here, I let her. Talk to her. 
I mean, these two are getting added in addition to Emily. Uh, Emily has been doing a phenomenal work on as a co-chair already, and she'll continue to be the co continue to do the co-chair part as we roll out. So thanks, JJ. So yeah. some quick general updates from us. We have worked with the CNCF to issue a press release concerning the supply chain security paper that was recently released by the group. This came out of work following the solar winds attack and has been continual evolving it is a continued evolution of the work that we have done in the supply chain security catalog that goes through and enumerates attacks that the community has um, come across and groups them by type of attack and provides remediations as we see them so this is a huge effort. It's just one of the many things that the group is working on. They're um, meeting back up again to start defining what their next deliverable is. That's all I have. Awesome. Yeah, I think that's mostly what we had from Six Security. Thank you. All right, great. So I think I already said in the email, but um, big thanks to JJ and Sarah for everything they've done with the group that is currently, you know, that is now called Tag Security, but it's you know, originated as SAFE several years ago. And um, JJ and Sarah were, were part of the original team who kind of made these groups that are now called Tags into a real thing. So I uh, really appreciate their work on that. And uh, hi to Brandon and Aradna. I can see you're on the call. So um, a little bit early because we, you know, the vote's still in process, but it's great to see you all um, jumping in. <laughs> yes, a pleasure. Thanks, any Lisa. questions for tag security from anyone? All right, storage, I think, is up next. Yes, so hi Liz. Um, hi. So we have uh, we have uh, a new co-chair nominee, uh, Jing, who's uh, currently a tech lead uh, with the SIG, um, and we have uh, Nick Connolly, who we're nominating to be a tech lead, um, who is currently a member and contributing to um, to the tag already. Um, I'd I'd like to point out we've I just recently sort of maybe an hour ago, um, sent the email out to the talk uh, mailing list uh, so we can um, sort of formalize this uh, with a vote. I think they are um, fairly uncontroversial. You know, Jing is so well established uh, in the storage space, both in the Kubernetes side of the world and, and with our tag. Um, and, and again, Nick is, is you know, very um, an established uh, technology uh, technologist in, in the storage space um, and has been working uh, with us on on some of the performance documents for example um, for for uh, almost a year now um, and this kind of follows on from uh, of course Aaron moving out um, from the from the sig into the into the TOC um, so so Xing will be um, replacing Aaron's uh, Aaron's seat. Um, and then if we move on to the next slide, please. Um, we have a number of projects which are going through review. There is the Longhorn project, which is currently Sandbox moving into incubation. Um, SAD is the sponsor for this. Uh, the DD process is, is ongoing. Uh, Luis Pabon, uh, one of our tech, tech leads is um, is is running the DD process there. We've got uh, Chihuahua OFS, um, which again is currently in sandbox and moving to incubation. Um, uh, Zhang is um, the sponsor, and a DD doc has been drafted. We're meeting next to um, review that document. Um, OpenEBS is. Um, currently has a proposal open um, we have the the we have a, an outstanding item um, where the team needed to provide us with um, an update uh, on some of the uh, licensing uh, issues that, that we were discussing previously that just reached out uh, uh, as part of this meeting 
um, and so they're ready to to um, to cover the, the the topic and provide an update. Um, so we'll be doing that either this week or next. Um, and in terms of uh, in terms of content uh, that we're working on, um, we've had extensive discussions. So this has been we've probably had um, I don't know something like ten meetings on this already, covering the cloud native disaster recovery um, and the different sort of options and patterns and architectures that that apply um, uh, in a cloud native world when you're considering disaster recovery, especially uh, in consideration with sort of moving from some of the traditional experiences there. Um, and uh, we have we have a draft which has now undergone many iterations, um, which 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 is kind of coming to coming to a point where uh, we're we're happy with it, and the number of changes is is reducing. But of course, we'd we'd love you know since this is such a big topic, we'd love um, we'd love any feedback from from any of the tags or the TOC at this point um, on the on the document. Um, and uh, if uh, if anybody is interested in in covering this, we'll you know we're we're, we're covering this in, in our regular uh, tag meetings too. Um, the performance and benchmarking white paper um, has sort of stalled because we've been focusing on the the projects and disaster recovery documents, but we're hoping to to get to finalize that shortly. Um, and then recently we had uh, the Vineyard project um, successfully move into Sandbox, um, which is which is an interesting project to to accelerate storage, mostly for um, uh, a number of uh, use cases like like ETL and and with distributed systems in Kubernetes, which is which is particularly exciting, I think. Um, and that's our update. Is there a working group for performance and benchmarking? Um, we were covering off the document uh, as part of the standard uh, tag calls. We we sort of hadn't splintered it off into into a working group. Yeah. Um, but if there but if there is a, you know, if there is uh, interest from some more people to to participate, absolutely, we could do that. Oh, well, no, I just I was more wondering how I got involved, would get involved from a technical basis. Um, so, so the document is 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 open for um, for comments, and uh, if uh, and and we're you know I'm quite happy to slot it in as an agenda item for one of our next calls too. All right. Any more questions for tag storage? Okay. Um, Dave, did you want to take a few minutes? Sure, yeah. Um, so I wanted to have, I guess maybe it's two different conversations, but a conversation about the multiple organizations graduation requirement. And I think, I don't remember exactly, I don't have it open in front of me right now, but I think the way it's written is that we need committers from multiple organizations. But I think the way that the TOC has historically voted and discussed it has been having multiple organizations as maintainers or some sort of kind of much stronger voice than just committers. And I'm curious both what people on the call think of that requirement and specifically kind of what the spirit of it is and why we have it rather than explicitly just like, is the number of organizations here greater than one? And then maybe to call out an extremely specific reason why I care uh, is that I am currently sponsoring the graduation process for Linkerd and Linkerd, it, all of the Linkerd maintainers are from Buoyant, but it's debatable whether that's actually a negative thing for the project and a reason we shouldn't let it pass graduation. Though, if we just look at the number of organizations, the number is one. Um, so I think Will's on the call. So I'm happy to hear his thoughts as well as kind of anyone from the TOC or anyone else on the call that has opinions on what the spirit of that requirement is, or if they have specific uh, thoughts on Linkerd, whether it should or should not uh, like pass that bar with its current setup. Um, I wanna just add a little bit of historical color to, you know, this isn't the first time we've had the discussion about this. I think the last time this came up in um, 
uh, you know, in, in significant form, it was around the idea of having, um, oh man, the, the term escapes me, that um, the Sorry, idea of yeah. like a supervisory committee yeah. um, who... Steering uh, committee. Steering committee, that's the, that's the word I was thinking of. Thank you. <laughs> uh, which has come up, you know, from a few different projects, the thinking being it's not just about committing to code, it's about ensuring that uh, multiple organisations have um, the ability, the roadmap isn't just uh, defined for the benefit of one particular organisation, but that, um, you know, a community project should be have some influence from multiple organizations so i just want i, I don't want to repeat that whole conversation but i just wanted to remind people that that had happened in the past yeah. for the question of what's the spirit of this requirement i just pasted a link into chat um which was when we previously discussed this and and narrowed down why we have this requirement what the reasons behind it are um, so if you go ahead and look at that, it actually has a sort of first and second priority in terms of, of why the requirement exists. Um, the, um, I, for Linkerd in particular, I actually had the impression that they had started um, this end user council thing with the idea of using that to get somebody with a maintainer equivalent uh, position um, who did not work for Voyant. Um, the um, um, I yeah, thought that was going rather well. Yeah, Josh, it, it, that wasn't the intent of the steering committee, although it is going rather well. The, in, the yeah. intent of the Linkerd steering committee was to make sure that we have mm -hmm. end users driving the Linkerd roadmap and and giving us kind of giving the maintainers explicit feedback. Um, but there's no ask of them explicitly or implicitly to become maintainers. Yeah, so I guess one of the problems that we had with the steering committee concept when we had this discussion that was never quite resolved was the question of what prevents having a titular steering committee for a project that's diverse, but in which the members are actually not in any way involved with the project. Um, that's That's always the... Uh, kind of the concern, um, because, you know, it would always be possible for any project to sort of appoint a group of random people um, who aren't really involved with the project. So we need to have some way to ensure, you know, for example, like you're trying to do some way to ensure that and to be able to check that the members of the steering committee are actually determining the roadmap for the project. Um, and I don't think anybody's quite figured that out yet. Yeah, I mean, I can only speak to the model that we use um, on the Linkerd steering committee, which is, you know, maybe six months old at this point. So it doesn't have a super long history there. Um, but we kind of have an explicit roadmap review process as part of the meetings. Uh, feedback is incorporated and, you know, ideally addressed. And then we revisit that in the next meeting. And, you know, everything's recorded and there's notes yeah. taken and, and so on. Okay. Um, cool. Can we put this on the agenda for next governance WG to see if we can actually get down enough requirements um, for this sort of structure? Yeah, I think the last time we um, talked about documenting this, we were, uh, the TOC was concerned that if we make everything too prescriptive and, and and i agree that as documented it is not i i don't think the graduation criteria currently reflects my perception of um the toc's thinking on this but i don't think we want to get to a point where it's like if you achieve these things you know you will definitely have passed everything that the um that the toc expects some of this is going to be judgment based and so it, so we need to find a way to articulate that in the graduation criteria. Um, I think that from the discussions that we've and other TOC people do speak up, I think that the broad idea of steering committees and the way that Linkerd have gone about it is, you know, seems 
seems to be meeting with approval, I would say. Um, and yeah, that isn't to say we've had a vote in it or anything. I would just say that in discussions about it, it feels like a positive way to ensure that projects that do have one vendor who is sort of doing the bulk of the work on the project can still be considered to be community projects because otherwise they shouldn't be in the CNCF in the first place. Um, but and I think Linkerd is actually doing a, a really good job of sort of setting an example and and feeling out how to do this in a way that meets what they need for the project, meets what the community need from a project, and doesn't require kind of artificial barriers around like how do you force another employer to pay pay a maintainer? It's impossible. Well, thank you. <laughs> I'm glad, glad that comes across that way. Um, so beyond the, uh, you know, I don't, don't want to put words in Dave's mouth right now, but, you know, one of the things we have been struggling with a bit as we work on the due diligence doc is less the idea of like, okay, is control of, you know, Linkerd, is Linkerd a true community project, but it's more about the longevity aspect. So, you know, if Buoyant disappears, does Linkerd continue and is that the bar that we need to meet and do we need to have some explanation for how things will continue in the case where you know the the single vendor um disappears and what does disappear even mean is that like acquired by another company or is that like running running out of money and like just disbanding you know so is there has there been any toc thought about that aspect of the multi vendor maintainer requirement i think we've always felt that that is uh, there needs to be some uh i don't know explanation of how that isn't going to be a problem for this project or or how much that is or isn't a risk for a given project because i think it is a a reasonable concern that you know if a vendor is acquired by another company and then that other company is not interested in in maintaining that project what what does that mean um you know how will that project continue will there be will it put at risk any end users who are relying on that project And I think the risk of that happening does vary somewhat from project to project. And it, it kind of, you know, a, a project that comes out of a vendor who are very specifically focused on one project has a different, you know, say risk profile to a project that comes out of, you know, one of the giant cloud vendors who have a hundred different projects on the go at any given time. So I think there might be ways of addressing that concern without it necessarily being, you have to have multiple you know, maintainers at any given time. That's just my own my own view. Yeah, I'll just say selfishly as, you know, the CEO of the company that is funding, you know, the majority of Linkerd development right now, I'd much rather say, hey, Buoyant's doing really well and like we've got a strong economic, you know, kind of incentive to keep Linkerd moving than to have to argue for the opposite condition, which is like, oh, everything's going to be fine if, you know, Buoyant just vanishes. So I guess I just don't, you know, where is that bar? Is a bar that it has to be like, you know, indestructible, even if point goes away, or is a bar that like, it's not going to go away because things are going really, really well, right? I don't know if that makes sense. I think with a generic, or sorry, go ahead. No, with a generic project, I think this is a valid concern. Maybe with Linkerd and Buoyant, the relationship is close enough that it's not very likely that like buoyant stops caring about linkerd maybe the other point and this is one i forgot to bring up with you will is what if an other what if other vendors come in to the linkerd space and start growing and then like are competing with buoyant and now we have this funny thing where like they're linkerd vendors but buoyant owns linkerd but they're competing with buoyant um so you have the like how do we ensure that Buoyant isn't necessarily driving the community away from vendors for economic reasons that aren't necessarily in the best interest of Linkerd as a community? 
Yeah, so that actually is an easy one from my perspective. I would love to have other vendors involved, and we've we've always been welcoming and, and open and, and eager to make that happen. Um, but this gets into the specifics of like Bryant's business model and the fact that we're not selling Linkerd. You know, we're not selling like Linkerd Enterprise. We set ourselves up kind of purposefully so that Linkerd is supposed to be a community project, and we would like to have other people involved. Um, but you know, I don't know how much of this discussion should get into like. The specifics of Boyan's business model, I guess. I'm happy. I mean, I'm happy to have that discussion. Yeah, I, I think it's more important for there to be a process, um, which which there is with Linkerd, by which someone can clearly become a maintainer who doesn't work for Boyant. Um, the, um, I mean, that's that's because like when we had this discussion about what are the reasons behind the multi-org requirement, right? top priority was openness. That is the project must be open to contributions and potentially maintainers from people other than the initial sponsoring company. Um, and, you know, and the one about continuity was kind of secondary because let's face it, we have a bunch of existing graduated projects where they do have maintainers from multiple companies, but one company is responsible for 80% of current code drafting. And those projects would be in serious trouble if that one company withdrew their technical support. Um, so that's not really new for us. Um, but there needs to be one of the things I think we witnessed. Here's an example of um, uh, the Mesos project was a good example of kind of a failure in that continuity process, where when the contributors from a single organization this stopped working on it, there was no process to advance new maintainers um, who worked for a different organization. Um, and we want to avoid getting into that particular trap. James, you were. Yeah. Um, so currently, the way uh, we do business is, um, if it happens, then we essentially have an attic process to uh, mothball the project, right? Um, and so essentially at that point, um, any of the end user uh, community folks uh, have to stop using the project and switch over to something else. Uh, so, so that's the current situation, right? So can we make that situation a little bit better? Uh, and that could be like having some kind of a plan um, that can be executed uh, at that time to say, see these are the other options that you can switch over to either some documentation something like that so basically we have to come up with an answer to the question that other people are going to ask us like how can i be sure that linkedin is going to be around around for the long long term for me right like that's a question that is going to come from the end user community uh, that's definitely um, what we should answer here uh, the other aspect to this also is i would rather this kind of a discussion is an exception to the process rather than um, saying that, you know, yes, uh, this is a model that we want to espouse as, okay, in, any of the new incoming projects can adopt this by default, right? Like if we end up going that route, then most of the projects won't even think about like all the things that they can possibly do to uh, get other people to join their project and do good work. Uh, so that was, those were the two things that I was worried about, uh, William. Okay, so then, you know, Dave, maybe you, you and I, uh, you know, document the path to maintainership in Linkerd, document the examples of, you know, non buoyant maintainership in the past, which we've had, you know, in, in a limited way. Um, and then, is there anything else you would want to see? around this require, and I guess document the steering, the kind of steering committee mechanics. Yep, I think that sounds good to me. I just wanted to make sure that other people on this call don't have additional things so that we don't do that and then find out we missed a couple things. So I guess anybody else speak now or I don't know, or comment later in the due diligence talk when we missed something. Yeah, the other aspect that we didn't talk about, Dave, here was like we uh, the questions that we were trying to put together the other day 
uh, we said both founding companies and founding engineers. Um, so I don't think that's a problem here, um, but for Linkerd itself, but that was the other aspect that we were talking about. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. But I guess, yeah, to your point, maybe the linker to due diligence doesn't need to get into the individual's part. Cool. So then I guess we're good. We have a way forward for Linkerd and we don't want to have a generic way forward is what I'm hearing. Yeah, I feel like we should have something in the graduation criteria that acknowledges that we don't always stick to the letter of you know it must have maintain or committers whatever the, the wording is um something about there may be other ways of um de-risking the project shouldn't that be in the governance um overview for each of the product projects though because if i look back at things like Container D and core DNS, it clearly outlines the different roles and how to contribute and establishes the neutrality of each one of the projects. I would think I would see something for every project underneath the governance that should cover that anyways. I'm gonna say, let me point out, we just published the contributor ladder template. <laughs> <laughs> kind of with that idea in mind. Okay, yeah, I, I was just, it, it seems like there is some overlap there and I'm, less familiar with the governance already established for Linkerd, but I would think as part of graduation, we we would reflect back on that anyways to make sure it's part of the complete due diligence. So thanks, Josh, for that call out too to the new template. So that sounds as though there might be some additional documentation of how that process of, of becoming a maintainer has worked in the past and would work in the future. Um, that template might be a useful way of expressing it. Um, yeah. All right, Dave, are you happy? As the person who brought it up? <laughs> yeah, I think I'm good. Brilliant. All right, anyone got anything else they'd like to add on that? Separately, I know we've got Matt Young on the line. We skipped um, observability. So anything that you'd like to be able to add, I'm now putting him on the spot. Uh, hi, um, nothing huge to add. Um, the slide's up to date. Uh, we've had a slow few weeks coming off of KubeCon and a lot of people taking PTO. So it's been a little bit quiet for the last few weeks, but um, moving forward, uh, we're going to be engaging with the platforms that have been stood up uh, around YouTube and the community site, uh, as well as um, uh, you know launching some of the working groups that we have. We talked about two meetings ago. Uh, in the last two weeks, we also had Pixie Labs. Uh, last two meetings, rather, we also had Pixie Labs and uh, a tool called Prompt Dump be presented to the SIG uh, to the tag rather. Uh, so we'll hope to have some more updates uh, next week, um, uh, rather than the next TOC meeting. Uh, so nothing huge to report. Great. I think last time we spoke, you were looking for additional chairs and tech leads. How's how's that search going? Yes, indeed. Um, uh, it's been a little slow again. Um, a, lot of, a lot of the folks in this space kind of, I think, uh, coming off TrueCon or a little pride. Um, so uh, we, we are looking for both uh, new tech leads uh, as well as a third chair. Uh, so if anyone uh, has folks in that space uh, that you would uh, think would be a good fit, please reach out um, to either our liaisons or uh, Richie or myself. Uh, All right, good stuff. Thank you for the update, Matt. Any questions for tag observability? All right, time for a cup of tea before your next meeting. <laughs> All right, thanks everyone for your time and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye. Thanks.